What do you think of this one, Carl? Yeah, this is an intriguing match we've got here on day one. I always feel like Jason Short wins the leg. It's a bit of banter between these two. I always want to get the win over each other. <coughs> First rack. Jason Short to break. Talk about Jason in a second and what he's been up to. But there you see he's breaking off with the playing cue and with an open bridge. What a break that is to get things started. Just look at that. Four balls down. Wow. Rifled through them. He's not going to have an easy opener, though, even though he has potted four balls. You can see he can't pot it past the pink. Cutting it into the top right is well, its a horrible shot, so there is work to be done here. Just see there, the back of Jason's queue, no longer using the extension. He has got rid of the extension on the back of his queue. For many years now, he's been using with a probably a 70 inch queue, I bet. 68, 70 inch queue. So, what would be the thinking behind making that change? Well, I know he's been over in Sheffield before Extension he's call. come here. He's been doing some work over there. Mr. Feenit on the snooker table, and he's been looking at his cue action. Now that's Steve Feeney, the inventor of the fabled sight right system. Beautiful shot there from Chris. Of snooker, that's very much the background Chris Melling comes from. Was on the professional snooker tour for some time, reached number 79 in the world, beat some very good players. Melling currently number 52 in the world in pool, but I think perhaps reflects he's got other commitments going on, a bit of a Q Sports all rounder. He's a better player than that ranking would indicate. Time at all, really. He's mopped up this opening rack. Four balls down off the break for Jason Shaw, but it didn't get him anywhere. Melling leads 1 0. Yeah, this event will suit Chris. The fact that he does play a lot of English eight ball, he's not really been playing much nine ball. He comes to the events he can, you know, he played US Open, did very well there. Obviously, it was the World Nine Ball Championship, but the fact that he's going to get to play a lot of matches will definitely suit Chris this week. Chance for him to play his way in, I guess. Still a couple of the mainstays, really, of British pool, as it were. I've been hoping to see a few more new names make their way through in recent years. It just hasn't happened at all. Still, these guys, Imran Majid, Elliot Sanderson, these are the names on the British scene. Are you aware of any anyone coming through who has the potential to become one of the best right. British players? Leading challenge these guys? No, not not really. I was just thinking then I know a few years ago, obviously the Brits You know, when we, we had a stage of playing on the European tour where a Brit was in the final every single one. That went on for quite quite a while and obviously the fact that Appleton won a lot of the big majors, you know, one of us was always lurking somewhere, but it has seemed to have fell behind a little bit, but the fact that, you know, Matchroom have really got the teeth into the world of nine ball, and, you know, we have a, a big nine ball world tour now. Things will change. It's all about the younger generation watching these two guys at the table now and want to wanna be out there. We saw at the UK Open, Last May, there were quite a few British players who were able to show a bit of potential, win a couple of matches, but nobody who really looked like they were going to take that next step up. We'll see in time. Oh, that was a nice shot there from Christopher. Had to go rail first, and Chris is having a bit of a resurgence in Q Sports. There was a while where he kind of gone a little bit. You know, he weren't really doing much. 
He was struggling, but of late, he's doing real good, some real good stuff, especially on the small table. And I think because he's doing well on the small table, he's, he's giving him confidence on the big. And such a natural player, just gets on with it. Yeah, the small table, you're referring to eight ball, where he's been world champion a couple of times. You also mentioned uh, earlier on the US Open quarter finalist there back in October in Atlantic City was eventually beaten by the Austrian Max Lechner, who went on to reach the final. Well, this has been quick, Chris hasn't Melling it? Wins the Chris Melling already leading 2 0 with that break and run. This match could easily be over in 20 minutes. That's just the style of not just Chris, Jason as well. He likes to you know, play his natural game. All over pretty quickly over on table two. Konrad Yasushin of Poland, 5-0 winner over Yong Duk Tien of Vietnam. Earl Strickland will be back into action very, very quickly after that narrow loss to Alban Ocean. He's, he's next on two against Noyuki Oi. Late call-up for this event. Yeah, table two is available on Matru Multisport YouTube channel. Rack three. So Jason Shaw's gadgets break. out and get both matches on. Two racks to nil. This break from Jason, this open bridge break, I don't know, he's just not sitting too well with me. Jason Shaw, 34 years of age, from Scotland, based in the United States for some time now. Ranked number six in the world. Relatively early from the World Championship. A few weeks ago in Poland. Beaten in the last 32 by John Mora. So going out at that stage for the second year in a row. shot he's got a nice angle he can just roll the cue ball through seven to the eight needs a little bit of respect yeah if you can draw the cue ball back and play the eight in the bottom left i think that's what he will play so he's just at a walk around to cool. see if that is available He's playing a power draw because he's using the loop bridge. Yeah, he's trying to come underneath it with spin. This isn't going to work out good. It's not going to work out good. Can he still thin this one in? Well, he's been fortunate there. Boy, has he been fortunate to leave a pot there. Just enough distance between the cue ball and the eight to make the pot and a routine nine to follow. So a high quality start. Chris Melling Jason had a Shaw run out that. from the break to go 2 0 in front. But Jason Shaw has replied in the same style. He now trails 2 1. Thank you. Opening day at the Morningside Arena in Leicester. Plenty of drama in the first match on table one as Alban Ocean edged out Earl Strickland in a Hill Hill finish. So much quality in the Chris early Melling's stages break. here. Chris Melling leading the old British one. clash with Jason Shaw 2 1. Melling has the break in rack four. Made the one. There's no shot on the two.
That's the kind of bridge jam that I kind of like to see the players using, the one that Chris was using, that long loop bridge. So you see SVB using a lot, and there's no better breaker than Shane. Push out cold. Jason, your choice. Just tying another ball up there was Chris. Now you can see the six doesn't pot. Jason's got the option, play this shot or give it back to Chris. Foul. They'd like that one again. They really would. Ball in hand. Please stop the clock. Put the cue ball anywhere you want on a foul. Extension called. More often than not, I think when you get ball in hand, it tends to lead to end of rack. But of course, it was obvious from the way the balls were sitting, it wasn't going to be as straightforward as that. In this situation, a bit of figuring out to do. He's going to that cue ball well. He really did. The seven nines a combo. Can Jason use the cue ball? Maybe there's too much gap now you can see from that angle. Extension call. So the last two shots from Shaw in the safety department have not been very good at all. Yeah. This error looks much more likely to cost them than the previous one. Said it wasn't a straightforward situation at all. Melling was coming into, even with ball in hand. So the seven will probably just float over near the other corner. That way Chris can control the cue ball. And you see the seven just comes over nicely. That's why Shaw couldn't attack the kick combo on the previous shot he played. And all in all, Chris looks to be queuing all right, doesn't he? He really does. Yep, yeah, and he's two clear again now at 3-1. And I always feel it's important at the start of a tournament like this just to clarify a few things. And you saw the combination there on played on the 7-8. So long as you hit the lowest value ball remaining on the table first, then any pot is legal and it keeps you at the table. So that's why the 7 was the lowest value ball on the table. He hit that first. That's why it was OK to then pot the 8 and then go on to pop the seven after that. So Chris Melling leading 3-1, just getting started over on the other table, Noyuki Oi of Japan, a very late call-up for this tournament, against Earl Strickland, the 61-year-old three-time world champion who was just edged out 5-4 by Alban Ocean on the main table a little earlier. 
Boy has a good chance to win the opening rack. Saying this is the first of two matches in a row for sure on the main table. Whatever happens in this one, he'll be staying on to face Seo Seoa of South Korea. Two female players in the field. Rack five. Jason Shaw to break. Training three racks to one. Something of a must win rack for sure. If he loses it, Melling will be breaking on the hill. Shot on the two. Problem here is the next ball is the pink four. So if he was to pot this in the left corner, extension call. Cue ball's running towards that side, so it's very difficult to get on the four. Can he also chop it in the centre pocket as well? He's always he's out of sorts, isn't he, Jay? He really is. So many loose shots we've seen already. Rack five. When you've used a massive extension on the back of the cue, it makes the cue ball seem easier to play positional shots. It's like you don't have to hit things with as much power. The cue helps you a lot more. So the fact that he's took, he's completely took the extension off. It's going to be interesting to see how he uh, unfolds this week. You mentioned he's been working with Steve Feeney, the sight right guru, and. It's led to much success for many players, most notably Mark Williams, who turned around his snooker career and won his third world title five years ago now, having worked with Feeney. But it takes a bit of time for a player to really, in his heart, start believing in a method like that. Maybe this is going to be a week of transition for Jason Shaw from that point of view. Oh, but he's got another chance in this rack. Wow, what a mistake from Melling. He's looked good in the balls. Look at this one. Rare day, you'll see two players of this quality and experience. Both have a really bad miss in the same rack. We've seen it here. What a lifeline this is for Jay. Looked like going 4-1 down, somehow. He's going to pinch the rack. Yep, he had a bad miss on the two. Melling handed the initiative back to him. The really bad miss of his own on the six, and instead of breaking on the hill at 4-1, Melling finds his lead reduced to a single rack now at 3-2. Also leading by a single rack is Noyuki Oi, 1-0 up against Earl Strickland over on table two. Thank you. Surprisingly, Shaw keen to get on with us after Expect a twist at the end of rack five. If you weren't with us at the start of the show, just to reiterate what's going on here, 16 players, they'll all play each other once between now and Friday night, and you get one point for every match you win, every match race to five. The top ten players will then go through to the second phase, where they'll all play each other again over two days, and then six will survive for the final day next Monday. One last round robin section, and that will lead on to the top four going through to the semi-finals. And every match you win carries forward. It doesn't reset at the start of phase two or phase three. Every win will count throughout the tournament. So, as we've said, probably six, maybe seven wins needed to get through to the second phase. And some players will get to that number quite early on. And then, even before phase one is over, they're already playing to try to rack up more wins to survive the second phase and get through to the last day. Format which produced much drama at the end of each of the phases last year. No doubt it'll be the same Rack again six. in 2023. One all now break. on table two between Oi and Strickland. Two. Back here, it's Melling breaking at 3 2 up. The two ball seems to be going over near that side rail, causing...
problems off the break for both players and it's caused another problem here because the two will not pass the pink four. He may try and bank this two twice across, leaving it near the top rail. Get the cue ball near the six. Oh, he's missing this as well. This is turning into a bit of a comedy of errors from both Chris and Jason. They met in quite a high-profile setting last year. They were on opposing teams at the World Cup of Pool in Brentwood. Helling teamed up with Imran Majid as the Great Britain B team. They took on Great Britain A, which was Shaw and Elliot Sanderson, and the B team won 7-0 in the first round match. Went on to get to the quarterfinals. Back in Brentwood in May for the World Masters. Chris can see an edge of the two. Extension called. In hand. Trying to play a two-way cross me. bank there. I know he's trying to duck the cue ball down towards that corner, but again, it's a bad shot. Norm, we were talking about how good the quality was, but I mean, it's been a story of errors, both punished and unpunished since then. You know, it's well documented. Chris plays every version of Q Sport you can possibly, you know, try, well, most of them anyway, and I think when you're playing a version of pool at the highest level, I think it's always going to catch you out, and the fact that it probably doesn't play as much rotation pool as the, the other one, the small ball game. I think the physics of the game, the cue ball, how the balls react is where it's going to catch you out, and we've seen that twice now from Chris in his previous. How quickly it can all turn. It was only about five minutes ago. It looked as though Jason Shaw was going to be trailing 4-1. His opponent breaking on the hill. of that door has leveled it's at three all rack. and he'll be breaking in rack seven in just a moment this anglo-scottish clash between jason shaw and chris melling is developing into a question of who's going to make the fewer mistakes they both had plenty of them in the last few racks from 3-1 down, Shaw has levelled at 3-all. This game has changed on its head. Chris had a wonderful chance to go 4-1 up and probably put the match to bed and just look at the layout here for Jay. And he's got an open shot at the two. Got to get on this three, though. Not easy. Not actually too bad, that. The cue ball was always going to react a little weird because he was striking down off the rail. This is the type of shot when you're changing things with your cue action or your equipment. This is where it's going to test you. This is the type of shot where you've got to feel good. Yeah, nicely done. It wasn't a great 2022 for sure in the very biggest events the last 16 of the European Open, beaten by Joshua Filler, but 
It was actually the best run he had in those big full field matchroom tournaments. Did win the International Open in Virginia in November, beat Viktor Zielinski in the final and won two more Turning Stone titles. Another one of those. Ready this year, extending his record to nine overall after a really close finish against Skylar Woodward. Knowledge that lost his focus and a bit of his desire and passion for some time, and I think that win in Virginia signaled that it is coming back for him. The second time in the match, Shaw is going to run out from the break. And a very brief seventh rack has gone his way, which means he leads for the first time in the match on the hill at 4-3. 3-1 you. now to Noyuki Oi on the other table against Earl Strickland. Who would have thought Jason Shaw would be on four? before Melling in this match. There were just three balls left for Chris. It's home and dry and I know there's a lot of pool to play, but losing a match like this would hurt, especially against your mate, Jason. He's going to get ribbed all day long. He'll be in the practice room, winding each other up all day. It's going to be a long day for Chris if he loses this one. The, the wind-ups does Jason. Don't know, is it better? From that point of view, to be his friend or his enemy. He's probably harsher on his mates. Horses, pretty much everyone in the game. Such a friendly chap, Jason Shaw. So is this guy, Chris Melling. He's got to find an answer here. He's lost three racks in a row now. He has to win this one. Rack eight. Chris Melling to break, trailing four racks to three. This finished for him, Carl. He's made the one in the side, he's <coughs> intended, he's got a shot of the two, it's very thin though. Cue ball running away. Feel like if he misses the six, it's going up towards the five, so that doesn't offer a lot. May play this with a bit of left spin and try and crash into the six and three. That makes the pot tougher. That's what he's played. Or maybe he played the kick. Maybe he played the kick. Yep, he did. When he came round, I thought he was looking the two balls to bump into him. So good shot there from Chris. Kick and stick is what we call it in the game. Extension called. Yeah, one extension allows per rack over and above the Normal 30 seconds that you get. Well, if you are watching both tables, you will have just seen all the Pearl Strickland firing a lovely bank shot over on table two. Opposed to 3 2 now, it's Nuki Oi. A little bit of luck here, does Jay? As the combo set up, it's close. Combination can be made. It's all about where the cue ball and the two ball is going to finish. Extension call. Two-nine combo looks close. If the two goes in the side, obviously he's going to play it, but just looking at it, it looks to be close, doesn't it? Spot. I've talked about him as an all-rounder, as 
eight ball career time on the snooker tour but he is a very experienced nine ball player as well he's been in a couple of Moscone Cup teams over a decade ago now both times on the winning side one of those he was MVP more likely than not to say the least right now that we're going to see our second Hill Hill finish on the main table already today over than the cue ball no it's stopped that's okay gotta get the cue ball back twice across now you're going to see the power chris can generate on the cue ball drawing it back for the nine in the side We're about to go hill hill and yeah, chris melling had lost three racks in a row he simply couldn't afford to lose this one and he hasn't so chris melling Lane draws level at four all sure though we'll have the break in the decisive rack earl strickland over on table two has closed to one behind against noyuki oi it's three two there now i think when we see the big name players in this event match up you're going to see a lot of five threes five fours I did see that last year as well there was a lot of closer matches it's going to be jason to break it's the first match both players have played in this year's premier league pool I think it's fair to say it's a big little rat this one even though it's the first game michael yeah it is because you've got it particularly from shaw's point of view if he wins this he goes into a second match against co coa with a chance to be two out of two very early on if he loses it he goes into that under just a little bit of pressure already yeah hill hill against chris mellon and then he stays on the table to play see you so i mean this is going to bring up a lot of interesting match up this, this Premier League pool. Siding rack. Jason Shaw to break. Rifling through the balls. Three down and one break. Four balls down and another. What's he got here? He scratched. Oh, it stayed dry. It was sliding over the spin. Just help the cue ball stay alive. Here's another look. Watch the cue ball here. It spins off this bottom rail. But then the spin off the jaw just helped it stay. Absolutely kill the pace out of us. Earl Strickland perhaps heading for another close finish. He's on the eight, a couple of balls away from levelling at three all against Oi. Not going to be happy with that. He's not going to be happy with that. Chris has got the jump cue, but he may go back for his playing cue, yeah. I think it's a little closer to the nine than he realised. Extension call. Going off the bottom rail. Could also go off the side rail, but I think where the two's landed, it's near the bottom jaw. Chris does pride himself. These type of shots, kicking the ball. It's there. It he was a big favourite to make that, don't get me wrong. It needs a bit of attention though. Because the six ball. Maybe he can slide around the back of it off two rails. Yeah, you know, he's jacking down on it slightly. Yeah, there you go, watch the slide, two rails. The bump is okay. Didn't want the bump. Well, I say it's okay. Now the sixth ball is another big ball. You're always trying to look for a natural angle when you're potting it. Overdone it. Has overdone it. 
It always looked likely if he was going to miss it, it would be that way with the overcut. So another twist, but what is Shaw left with here? Get through the gap to it. If he can't and he goes rail first, he's got to be careful of the scratch in the top corner. See how the cue ball is coming up towards that way. He will have known that, he will have assessed that. Extension called. Safety shot. Oh, another poor safety shot. His safety game in this match has been dreadful. Yeah, I don't think that's overly harsh by any means. So many shots. It's remarkable to have that many errors in a relatively short match. And it's such an important part of the game. It's not all about putting the balls, break and runs, because sometimes the balls go ugly. Oh, that was a good pot. That was more difficult than it looked. Yep, absolutely. And Nelly in a big favourite now. It's not a guarantee by any means, but I expect to see it out from here. Scratched. Oh Found. my word, he's had chance after chance in this match to put it to bed and somehow Ball in Eagle Eye, Jason Shaw, looks like he's going to win this point. Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And even with all the mistakes we've seen, really, with only three balls left on the table, Shaw couldn't have asked for a much better chance than this to finish it. And Chris Melling, more than anything, will be left to rue that missed six ball in the fifth rack was three balls away from breaking on the hill at 4-1. But it all turned around after that. Shaw led 4-3. Melling did level again. He had his chance just there to take it. But it's Jason Shaw who emerges from another intriguing Jason contest here on the main table today. The winner by five racks to four.